So, you want to know more about certifications in cybersecurity? Well, you're in the right place because in this video, we'll be going through the GIAC certifications that you can get. Now, this is the second video as part of a series where I go through all different certifications in cybersecurity for beginners. I've previously covered the CompTIA certifications, so check that video out above if you need to know more on that first. And then in another video coming soon, I will have the ISC squared beginner certifications. However, this video will be focused on the GIAC certifications. After doing lots of research, I've pulled two certifications which I believe are good for beginners depending where you are at in your beginner journey as that can be separated. And that will make more sense shortly as I go through both certifications. So first, let's look at the GFACT certification. Now that stands for Foundational Cybersecurity Technologies and the GFACT certification is highly recommended for anyone new to cybersecurity. It allows you to develop hands-on skills through labs in areas such as Linux, encryption and programming as well as gain essential knowledge in areas such as networking and computer hardware, virtualization and Windows. So you can see that the breadth of knowledge is quite vast and you get to learn about different components and in different areas that will benefit you in your career starting in cybersecurity. Now, in terms of the actual exam, it's two hours long. It is online proctored and it includes 75 questions that you need to answer. Then the passing percentage is currently at 71%. Just make sure you check those stats out as these do change. So make sure that you are up to date on what the exam includes. So now that you know a bit about the exam itself, what is actually covered in terms of topics? Well, you will learn key hardware components and their functions, as well as associated memory concepts and understand virtualization and containers. You will then become familiar with common exploit anatomy and methodology as well as have basic awareness and understanding of the tools used by attackers to achieve and increase system access as well as the appropriate mitigation strategies and techniques used by them. So a very important topic that one, especially if you're going into a career such as cybersecurity. And then you will also become familiar with tools used in forensic investigations. So that's good for incident response as well as their functions for these tools. And then you'll understand the stages of incident response and understand the objectives of different types of forensic investigations associated with the evidence you can gain when conducting these investigations. So very key and important for incident response, which is a major topic in cybersecurity. And then you also have a networking and servers, which is to understand the core networking concepts, protocols, and understand the different server types and their uses of course, core knowledge that you need in this area. And then finally, we have Windows Foundations, and that's to become familiar with Windows CLI commands, understand permissions and access control, and understand the key elements of Windows. So very key concepts, very key topics that you'll need to have in your knowledge bank when going for a cybersecurity role. All stuff like this is good to talk about in interviews and make sure you have in your knowledge bank to prove that you're a good cybersecurity analyst or any type of role that you're going for within that space, such as an engineer or a network analyst. Now, going on to the second certification, which I highly recommend for beginners as well, it is GSEC, which is Security Essentials. Now, GSEC looks to ensure you are qualified for hands-on IT system roles with respect to security tasks. It's usually recommended for anyone new to information security who has a bit more of a background in information systems and networking, e.g. you could be an IT engineer or a supervisor or a security administrator. Now, you'll notice that with GFACT, it was for complete beginners, whereas with GSEC, it's looking at people who are still beginners, but have a slight more background, maybe in something more IT related. So you can already see, start to see a bit of a comparison in terms of which one you should go for, depending on your knowledge. Now, GIAC develops CyberLive, which is quite a new component. It's about a hands-on real-world practical testing, which has been brought about by the industry-wide need of practical testing within these courses and certifications. It's a really great component 
And if you do a bit of research on it, you'll see that cyber live testing essentially creates a lab environment where cyber practitioners can then prove their knowledge and understanding and skills by using actual programs, actual code and diving into virtual machines. Now, I think that's a very great component and very positive point to do with the GSEC because you get to then have a real world experience that mimics a real life activity that you would conduct within that job so it's very great that you can prove that you are able to do that by gaining this certification so a really good point there then in terms of the exam itself it is one proctored exam with 106 to 180 questions with a time limit of four to five hours and a minimum passing score of 73 percent so as I said before, that is correct at the time of recording this video. So make sure you do your own research as this could have changed by the time you're watching this video. And you can easily see that on their website, which is linked in the description below. So now that you know the important key concepts, what type of topics will be covered within this certification? Well, first you will gain and understand the fundamental theory of access control and the role of passwords in managing that access control. You will also develop an understanding of how to interact with and secure AWS instances. So if you don't know, AWS is Amazon Web Services. And then you will gain a basic understanding of the mathematical concepts that contribute to cryptography and identify commonly used symmetric, asymmetric crypto systems. And then also demonstrate a high level understanding of the importance of logging the setup and configuration of logging and the analysis with the assistance of seams. So an example of a seam would be Splunk. Finally, we then also have you gaining an understanding of the concepts and relationships behind reconnaissance, resource protection, risks, threats and vulnerabilities, which include preliminary abilities to create network maps and perform penetration testing techniques. So all very important concepts that will be key for you to go through when revising for this certification. So now that you know that, what should you do now? Well, again, like I said before, it depends where you are at in your journey and it depends at what stage you're at in terms of IT knowledge or cybersecurity knowledge, as that will largely determine which type of certification you go for. And I also highly recommend having a certification roadmap in terms of what you want to do in your career. It massively helps you out and allows you to think where you want to be in five to 10 years time in terms of your career. There's no point going for a certification than having no idea of what to do next. Of course, that can change along the way, so it's good to keep an eye on that, keep on top of that and keep having something to work towards. Comment down below what certifications you've done or you plan on doing so I can do videos on them in the future as well. And if you've enjoyed the video or have any questions, make sure you check out my Instagram and please do leave a like down below as it massively helps out the video and tells me that you guys are enjoying this type of content.